Hey, everybody. Welcome to the That's Good Sports Monday morning reaction to Football Sunday podcast. I'm Brandon Perna here with William Keys. That's right. I didn't. Yeah. <laughs> I, I didn't forget your name. Yeah, no, definitely not. Um, it's really early, uh, but we're here because this is the content that you, the listener slash viewer, deserves. And demanded. We listen. We listen to your very, yes. very good suggestion. So today we're going to recap uh, the NFL, kind of what we saw uh, watching football on Sunday, and then we're going to get into the Broncos-Seahawks game and kind of just talk about that in depth. Uh, hopefully no longer than 25 minutes here, but who the fuck knows? We're both tired. It's not that early. It's 9 o'clock where I'm at. It's 8 o'clock where Will's at. But I was up at 7.20 and went to bed at 1.30, Will. What's your excuse? Uh, just lazy. Okay, cool. So Will's lazy, and I am going to die making videos for my YouTube channel. <laughs> um, okay, we're jumping just right in. Yesterday was – we, should we go back to the Thursday night football game? Start there real briefly. It was the, yeah, I guess. It was the Eagles and the Falcons – Right. Uh, maybe one of the only games of the weekend that actually had some pretty good defensive play <laughs> from both teams. Yeah, I'm not sure if it was good defensive play or just awful offense, offense on both sides. Probably a mix. Yeah, I think the only way anyone moved the ball really was through penalty yardage. Yeah, I think, just, well, yeah. I think the Eagles' defense is legit good. Um, and I think the Falcons have a pretty good defense. We'll see how they hold up. Uh, Keanu Neal – tore his ACL, so he's done for the season. Uh, that's a big blow to the Falcons' secondary. Yep. Um, he's a – bowler last year. Exactly. And uh, so that was Thursday night. That's like too long ago to even fucking talk about. I don't even remember. Let's uh, – let me – I have the games up over here. Well, yeah, I think the big one – was last night Packers Bears that everyone's talking about today. Oh yeah. And that that obviously that one Aaron Rodgers was being carted off with what looked like another season ending injury in the first or second quarter. Uh Deshaun Kaiser came in, promptly got the Packers uh into a <laughs> into a what was it, twenty nothing hole. And Aaron Rodgers came back and by God he led the Packers back, 75-yard touchdown to Randall Cobb, won it. Uh, the Packers' defense held against Mitch Trubisky, and it's one of the greatest games we've seen in a while, I think. Wait, when did Aaron Rodgers leave the game? Was It, it was the first quarter? or second quarter. Because, I, I mean, I was watching it. I was trying to edit uh, the, the Broncos-Seahawks recap, so I had it on, and then, like, uh, I got, like, I don't know if I was eating or lost in my work. And I looked up and I saw number nine for the Packers at quarterback. I was like, wait, what the fuck happened? What did I miss? And I was like, oh, shit, Aaron Rodgers. And uh, it looked yeah. serious. And I was sure. going to like – still might be. Who knows? Yeah, he was uh, – after the game, his interview was – did you see his interview on the field after the game? Like, you could uh, tell, like – Yeah. He was – Or the post game. Uh, well, when he was on the field – he was – it was basically the coolest interview view you'll, you'll ever see. He just kind of was sitting there with his, like, grin on his face. And was <laughs> As he like, always is. Just like – he just knew how badass what he did was, but he didn't really want to say it. But you could just see it in him. He was just like, I am a fucking football QB god, and everybody yeah. should bow down to me, is, is the vibe he gave off. And uh, – <laughs> It was an interesting game because Khalil Mack was wrecking that game early, had a sack, yeah. took a touchdown back for – or took an interception back for a touchdown, making the Raiders look stupid, really stupid, which is always nice. Like, that's just a, a cherry on top. And then Clyde Matthews do. almost cost him the game. Like, I saw that hit happen, and I was like, oh, he's getting flagged for that, and then nobody said anything. I was like, oh, maybe he got away with it. And then uh, they cut back to him. It was – uh, a late hit he he could have pulled up and I say that because watching some of the other games on Sunday for the unnecessary roughness calls with the body weight on quarterbacks is just it's a problem it is ridiculous uh my wife who watches just a tiny bit of football understands just enough to be dangerous uh when I think it was Miles Garrett 
got flagged for tackling Ben Roethlisberger. Yeah. Like I rewound it because I wanted to get a clip and put it on Twitter. And she was like, that was a penalty? I was like, yeah. She was like, what is the defensive player supposed to do? <laughs> I was like, well, that's the question. Like you can't fall on the guy. But anyway, Bears Packers, huge comeback. Uh, great Sunday night football game. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, it really just cements that Aaron Rodgers is better than Tom Brady. Well, that was my takeaway. I, well, I mean, I knew that before the game. But, yeah, I guess if you're just learning that, then then fair. Um, yeah, you brought up Miles Garrett, and that was probably the second – I don't know. I want to say it's like the second best game of the day, even though it ended up in a tie. Uh, but that was a an absolute roller coaster of emotions for Browns fans, I think. Right. So the, uh, it, the Browns walk away with the tie is the, is yes. the thing there. Yeah, they win winless, winless last season, and they start this season with the tie. Over. That's the most Browns fucking thing that you could ever do, and their fans were elated. I mean, uh, yeah, uh, with the way it ended, I think they were probably all hoping for more. Uh, one thing I gotta say is like ten minutes is a little too short for overtime. It's got to be 15, I think. We're going to get too many ties, and I don't think anybody really likes ties as much as the Browns fans will tell you that tying against the Steelers is a pretty good outcome. No one likes ties. Ties like kissing your sister, right? And Browns fans are totally yes. cool kissing their sisters. Yes. Um, no offense, Cleveland. That's, that's no kind of a offense, Cleveland. strong accusation to make, but Miles Garrett, along with Khalil Mack and Vaughn Miller, Probably the the best – one of the best defensive performances of week one. Yeah, he's going to, I think, have his breakout season. Like, And I think yeah. that's typically true for a lot of pass rushers is uh, they're pretty good their, their rookie year. And then that second season when they kind of figure everything out, they explode onto the scene. And I think in training camp, what we got to see kind of with hard knocks in the Browns preseason, like Miles Garrett looked like Mack and Miller. like. He just has that uh, uh, ability to get away from, you know, the, the defender who's – or defenders with the way he uses his big, strong, bendy body. And in, in that game, did the Browns – did it end on a, a missed field goal or a blocked field goal? Yeah, it was, it was partially blocked. Partially blocked. Plus, okay. like, the rain, so I don't know. Right. The Steelers missed a field goal. The Browns missed a field goal at the end. And the Steelers uh, turned it over turned five over. times, right? I think it was more. I think it was like six or seven. Oh. Yeah, because you had one with like 36 seconds left that set up the Cleveland field goal. Let me see here. Let me confirm this. Three interceptions from Roethlisberger. Oh, that's all. You know what? I've got a real problem with the fucking NFL box score. Like, they make it at the top of your, your search, and it's like the easiest thing to click. But they don't do fumble updates on players. They don't do, like, longest play from a player. It's really a shitty product, and they're forcing it down our throat, and it pisses me off. Sorry. So, I, can't, I don't know where the other turnovers came from. But um, Roethlisberger know, threw three. I know picks. James Conner fumbled. He fumbled once, there. right? Yeah. I want to say Big Ben also uh, was strip-sacked by Garrett, too. Okay. Yeah. And there's yeah, probably so – Connor finished with 135 rushing yards, two touchdowns, and 57 receiving yards. Pretty uh, good. That's basically so, what Lev Bell does on his best day. So Yeah, I don't think they, the Steelers need to worry there. Um, yeah, it turns out when you have a really good offensive line, um, you probably don't need to pay your running back that much money. So. Exactly. So then, oops, <laughs> quickly, with some of these other games – uh, I think the other crazy thing was Ryan Fitzpatrick. <laughs> Ryan Fitzpatrick just destroying the Saints. I mean, yeah. And I like the Saints. I kind of wanted to. I want to see them get to the the Super Bowl. I like Drew Brees, uh, Alvin Kamara. But one guy I like more than the Saints is Ryan Fitzpatrick. Uh, he did always, go to Harvard. He went always to Harvard. rooting. For, for Fitzpatrick, 417 passing yards, four touchdowns. Um, yeah, he looked like 84 Dan Marino out there. Ran for another touchdown, didn't turn the ball over, put up 48 points on what was a really, really good pass defense last year. Uh, pretty amazing. And it's not the first time that Ryan Fitzpatrick has 
<laughs> basically uh, gotten a, a starting job by default and came out and, and lit up an opposing defense. Yeah, Probably I mean, the third time that's happened. So I, I think that the question is that there are the question there is, um, is the Saints defense terrible? Like, was last year sort of a, a one-off for that defense? Because that was the story last year. They had this running game, and their defense was pretty good, and it gave them a chance to be competitive in the playoffs because yeah. previously it was Drew Brees carrying the team. So, yeah, I'm going to give them another week. Um, I don't know what was going on. It looked like they were playing – it looked like there wasn't a safety on the field sometimes with the way Deshaun Jackson and, and Mike Evans were getting open on, on deep routes. It looked like they were just playing – cover zero for 50 of the 60 minutes you mean um, the, the, yeah. the same way it didn't look like there's a safety on the field with stefan diggs scored the game winner against them in the playoffs last year yeah maybe that trend started last year that yeah, was i would big plays if i'm if i'm the saints defensive coordinator i'd try out this new defense with a safety that's just i don't know might be that's just might be opinion. helpful it might yeah. like they're, they're the last line of defense, hence the word safety, yeah. you know. I should actually mention the Buccaneers' offense didn't score 48. Uh, the defense had a fumble recovery for a touchdown. Mike Gillisley coughed it up, and then Justin Evans from Texas A&M brought it uh, back for a touchdown. So gotcha. they really only gave up 41. Uh, it's 48-40, which was the first time ever that an NFL game has ended with a score of 48-40, to which sounds – pretty that's weird how did you wild. find that how did you find that stat uh i saw, I saw it on reddit ah good old uh, reddit good old reddit um so you think it'd be one at this point yeah but hey i mean there's so many combinations of numbers you can do that's by fair. adding touchdowns and field goals and safeties and mixed missed extra points the missed extra points what really give the chances yeah. to those different scores um the the Colts lose. Andrew Luck does not get a victory in his first game back, but he looked pretty good. Yeah, I thought he looked fine. I uh, think he was need... basically driving to to get to win at the end until Jack Doyle fumbled, and all of a sudden they lose by eleven. So yeah, never rely on a guy with the last name Doyle to get you a victory. Oh, no, Doyle does not rule. Oh no, he doesn't. Uh, Ravens just fucking destroyed the Bills, forty-seven to three. I thought the Ravens were gonna look good. I thought they were gonna beat the Bills, but I expected Buffalo to uh, give them a little bit of a fight. Yeah, no, Buffalo looks basically. Uh, they went from a playoff team to an expansion team in <laughs> in about six months, and. Uh, Nathan Peterman, I just don't think he's going to be the answer. Uh, they'll probably start Josh Allen next week. Yeah, you might as well. Good he's going to be. Uh, he's going to take a lot of sacks. He was only in the game for like less than a half. He was sacked four times. So I don't know how he's going to do behind that offensive line, but it can't get worse than week one. So yeah, I think the Ravens' defense is really good. Um, yeah. Let's see here. They had one, two, there's four. Flacco was just about perfect, too. Five Three. sacks, six sacks. Six sacks for the Ravens. Yeah, so they matched the Broncos' sack uh, production there. Yep. Yeah, I mean, Peterman threw a couple picks. Josh Allen came in, did nothing. But, yeah, Flacco looked very good. Uh, they ran the ball effectively, which – it's kind of been their issue, and they have some receiving targets now. That's, I think, the, the <laughs> going to help them with some receivers. And Willie Sneed was their leading. Only four receptions for 49 yards, but a touchdown, too. Yeah, there's three new additions uh, at wide receiver, all scored touchdowns. Michael Crabtree, John Brown from the Cardinals, right. and then uh, Willie Sneed. Yeah, so it looks like their, their offseason is paying dividends already. So the Ravens proving – my prediction that they'll win the AFC North correct after one week. Yep. Uh, 49ers lose to the Vikings. Kirk Cousins looked uh, very good. No turnovers. Yeah. Solid performance. Jimmy, Jimmy Garoppolo struggled a little bit. Also yeah, had, uh, also had uh, a handful of dropped passes at inopportune times. One 
big play to George Kittle, just right through his hands. Um, but I think the Vikings have one of the best defenses in the league. I thought that would be a tough game for the 49ers to win. So I'm going to hope uh, Jimmy Garoppolo just comes back. And I was so high on him week one and makes me look less stupid next week. Yeah, I know. Uh, I'm not going to press the panic button on Garoppolo yet just because – you know what? You have to you have to lose a game eventually, and now he's seven and one in the NFL. And now that he he knows what losing feels like, he's probably gonna come out and win the next seven. Yeah, first first loss as a starter. Jags beat the the Giants twenty fifteen, uh, and the Giants look good. I thought they were gonna be improved. I thought they did pretty good against a jag a Jaguars team that I think is gonna be very good. Uh, the surprise for me kind of was Patrick Mahomes with the Chiefs throwing four touchdowns against that Chargers defense. Even though they didn't have Joey Bosa, uh, they, okay. they okay. torched them. They torched uh, them. Yeah, it looks like four touchdowns on the stat sheet. And I'll, I'll give them this. The touchdown pass to Anthony Sherman was a nice throw. You had the slant to Tyree Kill, which that Tyree Kill did 90% of the work. The other two touchdown passes – were little flips, one to DeAnthony Thomas and then the other one to Tyree Kill again from, like, the five-yard line. It was basically a handoff. It wasn't a pass. But since he, like, shoveled it forward three inches, counts as a pass. Looks like Mahomes had this just incredible day when, in fact, his receivers did everything. I don't know why, but, like, I'm growing to hate Patrick Mahomes. (laughs) (laughs) Public enemy number one right now for me. He's in my axis of evil. I hate him. I can't say anything more. I, 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 I'd want him out of the NFL. I, I can't stand him. Okay. Will hey. with some passion. Hey. Passion for the Patrick Mahomes. I just, don't like, I just don't like him. Like the way he slings his arm when he throws it. Ew. Watching Phillip Rivers and Patrick Mahomes go against each other yesterday. Two of the ugliest throwing, throwing motions I've ever seen. Just ugh, despicable, disgusting football. Hated it. Rivers. 424 yards, three touchdowns with that terrible throwing motion. Patrick, time. 256 yards, four TDs. Yeah, uh, <laughs> we'll, well, I'm, I'm going to take your evaluation, and we'll see what both of those teams do yeah. week two. Uh, Redskins surprised me, kind of beating the shit out of the Cardinals, 24-6. to six. Adrian Peterson looked pretty yeah. good. Panthers beat the Cowboys, not a surprise. And that leads us to the Broncos Seahawks. That's the right. game of the week for us here. Anyway, our game of the week every week until um, there's a bye. Now you you you'll you'll critique Patrick Mahomes for yes. you know a, a short pass that goes the distance, but what about that Case Keesum swing pass to <laughs> Philip Lindsay? Basically no, the I, same no, thing. No criticism. Ab- no, no criticism. <laughs> no, that was a thing of beauty. I was a pro- hey. You got to put it on the money. Uh, no, he looked off Shaquem Griffin. Shaquem Griffin, by the way, uh, Mark Schlereth pointed out during the game, struggled a little bit. Uh, Mark Schlereth also pointed out with Shaquem Griffin, uh, when he was in good coverage once, he was like, look at the hands. Look at the hands. Look at the hand placement. I'm like, oh, Mark. That's that's unfortunate, Mark. Just one. Just one. I, I will say, have, listening to, to Mark Schlereth call the, the Broncos game is nice. Like, yes. he's a familiar Broncos voice. He's on the radio here in Denver every day. I like Schlereth. I think he's very good at what he does. And so getting him to call the game and knowing he's definitely got a Broncos, like, bias, uh, I don't know. I liked it. Yeah, he is the master of cliches. But <laughs> he's like, some, you just want to run the ball just to be physical. You just got to you just gotta get physical. Third and one, it's time to yeah. get physical. I think uh, he also, like, I was looking through some of the footage, and I just happened to stumble upon the part where he was like, what they had to do here was get inside penetration, and he got the inside penetration with the penetration here. He said, like, penetration, like, three times in a row, and I was just like, oh, man, I need to pull that clip. But it was late, and I was tired, and I just let it go. Just let it go. (laughs) Man, we'll have to find that. Uh, Yeah. Well, Mark Schler, confirmed fan of penetration, so – Hey, aren't all guys. <laughs> uh, yes, absolutely. Speaking of penetration, uh, a little segue here. Broncos had over 150 yards – or no, they had 146 yards rushing, 71 yards each on 15 carries each from Royce Fe- Freeman and Philip Lindsay. Identical uh, stats. 
Yeah, Booker added two carries for four yards. Basically useless, no big deal. Um, but yeah, uh, who was more impressive to you, Royce Freeman at the end or Philip Lindsay kind of throughout the game? That's a tough call. That's really tough because uh, I talked about it last night in my recap episode a little bit. But because both are really important, but I think the way I'll put it is uh, Philip Lindsay looks like the bigger. Or the, he's a more explosive player. He looks like a, a, a bigger weapon for the Broncos offense, kind of the way, you know, uh, Tyreek Hill is in Kansas City. Now, he's not as fast as Tyreek Hill, but he's the guy that when he has the ball in his hands, he finds seams and creases, and he makes mm-hmm. the big plays, and he's great in the passing game. Royce Freeman was kind of just, like, sturdy throughout the game, getting, like, those three- and four-yard chunks with runs was – Uh, Almost never taken down for like a negative loss. But then what he did in the fourth quarter when the Broncos needed to just eat up the clock because, you know, like the way Keenum had been throwing interceptions, you don't want to risk it. And he had two 10-plus yards to keep a a drive sustained. And to me, that performance in the clutch when you really need it, and the Broncos kind of – they haven't really had that for a while, I feel like, is a strong guy who – because his first run, it was – I think he only needed six yards for the first down, and he got it, and then he carried the Seahawks for, like, another six yards. So uh, I don't know which I like more. I think both are important, and I'm just yeah. thrilled that the Broncos have two young running backs doing it. Yeah, I was a little down on Royce Freeman at the beginning of the game. I was like, oh, man, he kind of – he doesn't look very fast. Like, he looks kind of slow. And then you saw him get the ball in the fourth quarter. It's like, oh, that's what he does well. Like when the defense is tired and they don't quite wrap up anymore, he's just going to plow through guys. He wears them down. Yeah, basically. So I think like Philip Lindsay is that guy uh, that's going to get you big plays early. And then Royce Freeman's just going to kind of milk the clock in that four minute offense and and power through some guys and and be your closer. Um, But yeah, I got to say though, too, the offensive line was pretty terrific yeah Uh, obviously they they um, created holes for Philip Lindsay uh, most of the game and for Royce Freeman too and they only allowed one sack on Case Keenum which I can't remember if that was like his fault really or the offensive line's fault Uh, it was uh, I would say a mix he he was he held onto the ball for quite a a while there and stepped up to where it looked like he had protection. I think it's more on him because the defender was basically able to get off his block to the left and, and go right into to Case Keenum. Um, and so it's more of a, I think, like a coverage type sack. Uh, yeah. But the off- you're right. The offensive line like it was one of those things where I noticed that Keenum had time to throw and that the running game was doing well. Um, and I didn't feel a need to talk about the offensive line after the game, which is a positive thing. Like, <laughs> you should just assume they're going to get protection. Uh, I also feel like last season, week one, did, what, didn't the offensive line look decent that game, though, too? Didn't the Broncos kind of run the ball effectively? Uh, had, until, the, until the end. Until the end. They had the yeah. turnovers, but they, they got the win. I think it's going to hold up because we saw the offensive line play pretty well through the preseason. So I'm, I'm feeling more confident about that. Less confident about Case Keenum's decision making uh, in a, in the games. I, uh, I think the the knock, the thing that Mike Zimmer didn't like about him is that they had to try to kind of constrain him to limit mistakes. I think that was. The, the struggle in Minnesota. And I think that's why they were maybe a little more conservative with him as a passer. Uh, like I said, 329 passing yards yesterday for the Broncos. That was would have been his second highest total all of last year in Minnesota. So uh, I think that might be the, the thing he kind of has to work on. But it's kind of what I expected in that he plays the game a little bit, not just because he's wearing number four, like Brett Favre where – He's, he's going to take chances, and I think he can correct some of those, those mistakes. Um, you said earlier, you know, he looked off Shaquem Griffin. Uh, the, a couple times he did not look off the safety. He correct. stared down his throws, and that's why the, the defense was able to, to make the reads on it. Earl Thomas had a pick, and then Bradley McDougal 
You don't give up two picks to a guy with the last name McDougal Keenum. Uh, and sure one no. of them came, you know, right after the Broncos got a, a turnover for him. And then the other, they, they could have put points up right before halftime too. And uh, luckily they're playing the Seahawks who I don't think are very good. They got away with it. Keenum did a lot of very positive things as a quarterback. They moved the ball well. Cortland Sutton got involved. He looked good. Mm -hmm. Emmanuel Sanders, huge day in the clutch touchdown to Demarius Thomas. Great throw, great catch. His feet were inbound, Seahawks fans. Uh, I don't know. What did you think of Keenum's interceptions? Are you worried? Uh, what was your takeaway? Uh, I'm not super worried. Like, when yeah. you're pushing the ball down the field, you're going to – turn the ball over occasionally. Like, you, you just don't want to turn the ball over three times in one game. But I'll just spin it positively and say he came back from each interception and moved the ball, and none of the interceptions came in the fourth quarter when it really mattered. So That's true. I'll live with it. Uh, I'll live with it if you're throwing three touchdowns. But obviously, got to get better, and I think you will. So just a matter I of decision-making. Okay, that's fair. That's kind of the boat I'm in. I'm maybe a little more concerned about it <clears throat> for a long-term sort of uh, playoff. What are their playoff chances? Um, but I think we had a very, I don't know, the, the tight ends. Jeff Hireman made a play. Jake Butt had a big, uh, was it third down? that uh, Yeah, he, he, they connected. he converted two first downs. Jake Butt. So that was nice to see. Not huge involvement in the passing game, but uh, I think they were they were there when Keenum needed, and maybe we see that start to develop a little bit more. Didn't see much of Deshaun Hamilton. I think kind of Emmanuel Sanders is 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 making sure Deshaun Hamilton doesn't take his job because he would have kind of the similar role. I feel like. Yeah. Um, but then let's the the offense just felt. Like, you had confidence they were going to move the ball and that they had a chance to score. They didn't – total yards was like 470 or some shit was, was the most since Peyton Manning was a Broncos quarterback. So the production yeah. felt better. You felt confident that they were going to be able to score. Um, and the defense mixed, mixed bag because I think overall they looked better than I thought they were going to. Uh, yeah, I they still, they have still some can't critique. cover tight end, but yeah. <laughs> Or tackled. I mean, that was the thing. Like, that one big play to – Disley. Will Disley. Disley. Will Disley. I never fucking heard of that guy. The His biggest play, I think it was like a 66-yard gain or some shit. Yeah. Across the middle, wide open, big gain anyway. And then he breaks like three tackles. Three just shitty tackling attempts on him. I don't know what the fuck the defense was doing there. Um, and But outside of that – well, and Tyler Lockett split the, the, the coverage. Chris Harris <laughs> was supposed to pass him off to Justin Simmons. Simmons uh, got turned around on that one. Okay, yeah. So that was a, a mistake by Simmons, who also had an interception. So, again, I think the, the problem is, and it, it's not a problem, but the thing that needs tweaking is the back end, the, the secondary, and just getting coverage on those tight ends because the pass rush looked great. Um, sure did. Do you think? Do you think the pass the pass rush was really that good, or a benefit of playing against what we know is one of the shittiest lines in football? It was pretty good. Um, the, the Seahawks offensive line probably has a lot to do with it, but at the same time, the quarterback is Russell Wilson, and he is one of the more elusive quarterbacks I've ever seen in my life. Um, so one of the best at like getting away from sacks twice. He did that like signature move where he's like he's scrambling deep in the pocket and yeah. he's just gonna turn around at the right time. And they clearly watched film. Like, this is what that guy does. So you gotta be right there when he turns around. And Shaq Barrett did it for like a billion yard loss. And then Vaughn Miller did the same thing for another billion yards. Yeah, uh, I think Shaq so got him for he played it perfectly. It was I think it was a twenty two yard loss yeah. Shaq <laughs> Barrett got him for. Um and you're right. It's it is good. a signature move. It's the the backward snake. Where he yeah. does like this thing where he turns right, he turns left, and then he loops around right, and he fucking completes passes. And I've seen him destroy defenses so many times where you're like, oh, shit, they got him, they got him, and then they don't. Mm -hmm. And then the Broncos, you're right, they did not fall for it. They they had it sealed. Um, Chris Harris gets in there for a sack. Darian Stewart, uh, Chubb and Stewart, oh, I think, yeah, shared, yeah. shared the sack there. Um, 
So maybe Russell Wilson losing a step. Maybe he's not as fast, or the Broncos just were smarter. I will say, yeah, I think I think Von Miller's just pretty good. God, Von Miller was it was so cool to see him out there with three sacks, the yeah. strip fumble. He just dominated that game against a very bad uh right tackle. Um Jermaine yeah. Effetti, yeah. It's like what it season is this for Vaughn? Eight? This is eighth season. Yeah, this is this is eight. And you always worry, like, is there going to be a drop off like, for, for positions like corner and pass rusher? I feel like all of a sudden, when, when, when you don't have it anymore, you don't have it. And Miller just, he looks fucking as good as he ever has. Um, and I, I was happy to see Shaq Barrett, too, because people forget about him. And I feel like he is on par with right now where Bradley Chubb is in terms of talent at the position. And I'd say better than Bradley Chubb because Shaq Barrett does the little things well in terms of if he needs to drop into coverage or play the run, he, he does those things. So uh, that, that front seven for the Broncos, I think, is, is very good. The, the Seahawks didn't run the ball very effectively, which I was kind of concerned about. It was really, really try to either. Yeah, I guess so. Like 14 attempts on the ground. Um, I mean, Chris Carson did hurdle Bradley yeah, Roby. That was their, yeah, that was their best run of the day. But that was pretty good. He run. also got the ball taken from his hands, so eh, not a great day for him. Um, I will sympathize with Seahawks fans for <laughs> Pete Carroll not being able to challenge that uh, Royce Freeman fumble. Like he couldn't get the challenge flag out on time, and the refs mm-hmm. let the play go. Like. Do you know, is it the rule that the flag has to be out for it to, to – I think the flag – ah, oh man. I think the flag has to hit the ground, doesn't it? Is that what it is? Like, has to touch the ground before the play starts and they'll blow I it guess. dead? I guess. I mean, it looked like – looking at the replay, uh, it looked like he had the flag out, and then you can see, like, the offense in the background. Like, you can see the wide receiver yeah. getting going, like, after the flag was out. But he's, like, yelling at the yeah. ref the whole time. Like, the ref knows he's going to challenge it. So my question is, like, can you be like, I'm challenging this fucking play. My- no, you got to have the flag. Like, you got to no. – That's such a that's dumb rule. flag is for. No, I know that's what it's for. It's a visual representation that you want to challenge. But you should be able to say, like, no, we want to challenge this play. I don't know. It, it, it led to a touchdown for the Broncos. It would have been the Seahawks' ball. One of those things that – happens in a game usually you're gonna get some fucked up thing like that happen at least once for your team every game so I don't think like oh the Seahawks were handed this win because it was in the first quarter I believe yeah maybe early second um but also, if, yeah if also, I were the Broncos I would have been pissed yes um I'm not gonna I'm just I'm not gonna lose any sleep uh over the Seahawks having a call go against them I'm just not going to. Uh, their whole dynasty started on that catch, no catch thing with Golden Tate in 2012 against the Packers. Right. So. Fair enough. You know what? I'm just, I, I, I'm, I'm struggling to feel bad for them is what I'm saying. I, okay. You have no empathy. I get it. No, not for the Seahawks. No. Um, Patrick Mahomes. No, I don't, I don't care that the Seahawks lost. I'm just saying I get why they might be mad. Oh, yeah. No, I get it. <laughs> I just don't. <laughs> There's the cynicism. Oh yeah, I get it. I get it. I just don't think bad. It. Uh anything else? McManus, two fifty plus yard field goals. That's clutch. You need yep. that. Uh perfect. Janikowski, Janikowski. <laughs> misses. He twice. He, had, he got the the Broncos. The Broncos almost shot themselves in the foot there. They were they lined up off sides on the 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 field goal attempt, and it wasn't even close. Like, they were definitely – it was definitely a penalty. So, Janikowski gets a second chance. I'm like, he's not going to miss two of these. And he shanked it to the exact same place again. So, thank you, Janikowski. Loved you fucking up as a Raider. Usually just against the Broncos. Other than that, yeah. you are pretty good. Um, uh, continuing the tradition in Seattle. So, very appreciative of that. Also, what I thought it was similar to last year's week one with Young Ho Koo in the, the Chargers, you know? So let's just hope that the outcomes for this season don't uh, match what we saw. Right, right. Yeah, the Broncos benefiting from missed field goals in their last three season openers, going back to Graham Gano with the Panthers. 
Fuck, that is true. That's the third, yeah. third year in a row that that's yeah. That's strange. But you know what? Uh, we'll take it. Hopefully the season doesn't end up like the last two. Um, but I don't know. Uh, are you optimistic going forward? Yeah, no, I am. I think I think the offense has the potential to care, get this team out of a, def, a deficit if it needs to. Um, assuming Case Keenum doesn't throw three interceptions every game, uh, the way the defense played in this this first game against Seattle, like I like their chance. I think the the pass rush and if the Broncos can keep run games in check, the defense will be fine. Like even with my concerns in the secondary, which aren't huge, but there it feels like some maybe even some communication issues back there uh, a little bit still. And just some yeah. guys out of position. And I think that'll get better. But we saw some of that last year as well. Um, Chris Harris played a pretty good game. He did. And I thought Todd Davis played a very good game. Uh, he, he won my Unhung yeah. Hero Award uh, yesterday. <laughs> and I looked this morning and he led the team in tackles, which I wish I'd have known last night. Um, and I felt like he was kind of all over the place. Now, I don't know if any of the tight end coverage responsibility was his on any of those plays, but other than that, I, th- I thought he played very well. So I'm excited about the defense. They look better than I thought they might, and the offense, b- d- despite the turnovers, looked very good. Yeah, no, I agree. I'm, I'm looking forward to next week. Obviously, we'll see what the Raiders do tonight. But yeah, so we'll get a I'm sneak not peek. counting on big things. At John Gruden, the Raiders. Well, we will see. The Raiders have a better offensive line than the Seahawks. So yeah. we'll see how that that pressure that, that the Broncos put on Wilson, if they can do it to Derek Carr Sunday. We'll preview that game in Thursday's podcast. Uh, and, yeah, I think that should wrap it up for this morning. Yeah, you want to do uh, big dick players really quick? Sure. Give me your, your big dick players. All right. I'm going with uh, – oh, let's do one from the offense, one from the defense. Uh, I got to go with Philip Lindsay and Von Miller because Philip Lindsay, over 100 scrimmage yards, has a touchdown in the first quarter of his first game at home in front of uh, all of <laughs> the hometown crowd. Uh, probably had a lot of family there, so that's pretty awesome. And then Von Miller, uh, if not for the Khalil Mack game on Sunday night, um, probably the focus would be on Von Miller. Uh, as the best defensive player this week. I hope this is the year that he wins defensive player of the year because he's had it coming. Yeah, no, he deserves it. No, I think he played better than Khalil Mack um, because he got his sacks throughout the entire game. Yeah. Khalil Mack. Mack Mack looked great against Deshaun Kaiser, which is – Yeah. Maybe Mack was a little tired that second half too. So, Hmm. um, yeah. Well, I already gave Von Miller the Big Dick Player Award last night, so I'll keep that for defense. A guy I feel like I didn't talk about enough on the offensive side of the ball was Emmanuel Sanders. So I'll give him the Big Dick Player Award in this uh, uh, podcast episode. 135 receiving yards. He had that 43-yard touchdown. I do recommend he he do not do flips into the end zone. I feel like that is an injury waiting to happen, Uh, especially if he can't land on his feet. He just flopped onto his back. As a not an impressive flip, but yeah, I, uh, I don't know. He was just all over the field. Him and Kim, uh, chemistry. Him and chemistry have a Keenum. <laughs> Him and Keenum have a chemistry. They so uh, this week for receivers, though, it was like I mean, Julio Jones started off with 169 receiving yards, and nice. just looking at like stat lines yesterday, there are a ton of guys that had like around 150 yards. Uh, Evans Odell, and Deshaun Odell Jackson, Beckham, yeah. both for Tampa. How, what did Odell Beckham have? Beckham had like a 11 catches for, I want to say 111 yards, but that might not be right. But it was all against Jalen Ramsey, so. Right, so that's a that's a big matchup. I mean, Tyreek Hill had an insane amount. So it was a yeah. big week for receivers. Emmanuel Sanders kind of gets lost maybe in that stat line with the 135 receiving yards. Thought he played really well on offense. Yeah, no, he was great. Uh, they were talking about, like, basically him and uh, Keenum were talking about how good their chemistry was uh, throughout the whole training camp, and they really backed it up week one. So that's good to see. Yeah, very good. Um, exciting game. Nice way to start yeah. the season. 1-0 at home. Got another home game against the Raiders. 
and uh, we'll preview that Thursday. So thanks for listening to the podcast. Subscribe here on YouTube. Also, iTunes, Podbean, download the shit wherever we do it. Do it. Please.